All right, all right. God bless each and every one of you out there, YouTube land, Facebook land. We are again talking about this very vital bloodline topic. And so we don't just want to talk about the bloodline that is within the, the, the genetics, that is within the biological aspects of the body. We also want to talk about the bloodline that we as Christians are engrafted into. We are brought into a new source of life, a new source, a regenerating source, a powerful source that Jesus Christ ultimately wants to in, uh, 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 to to introduce us to, in a sense. So one of the things that's very important um, concerning God concerning reality, uh, because one of the things that we're fighting against is the perspective of reality, the perspective, the perspectives of what is true, what is false, uh, what is right, what is wrong. We're, we're fighting um, these perspectives in reference to the, the people that are in the world. Everyone, uh, for some reason, has uh, for uh, for a lot of reasons, but uh, but specifically that they have these uh, these ideas um, of their own truth, their own standards, and so um, that's reality in nations that are prosperous, in nations that are rich. Um, but we know that just because a person is rich, just because a nation is rich, doesn't mean that they that they have true truth doesn't doesn't mean that like you you still have to submit to the laws that are above you mm -hmm. one of the things about god and so because when we when we're talking about god we're talking about a, 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 a entity we're talking about a being we're talking about uh uh the, this the father of spirits as it as, as it talks about in in hebrews that has control so what is god what, who is God? What is God? Uh, because we, we, we have to define these things because when we're, when we're saying these things, we don't want to say it from the perspective of, of other religions mm -hmm. and their perspectives of what God is. The Bible, God reveals himself through the Bible as, as, as an eternal being, an eternal being. So what is eternal? Eternal is uh, the fact that God lives outside of the concept of beginning and ending. He See, we as human beings, we understand life and existence from the concept of start and finish, birth and death. Uh, you know, so we don't readily, we, we don't really understand life outside of that framework, but God lives outside of that framework. God lives as an eternal being and he has no start and finish he's always existed and so it's hard for our minds to wrap around that because everything we know is birth and death start and finish beginning and ending everything you know even the scientific terms that scientists come up with like genetic entropy mm -hmm. um that that's the process of something li uh, uh, living and dying something being birthed and ultimately you know over time disintegrating into a a state of non-existence to some degree or transference of energy whatever however they want to put it <laughs> so when we're talking about god we're talking about a, a being that has revealed himself as the creator of the world the sustainer or the manager of existence and creation and who is responsible for the destination of creation and what creation or what existence is heading toward he controls all things he he is uh in power in position to to maneuver things as he wills he is in sovereign control of all creation and so that god has introduced himself in a sense as his mission we know his name is jesus christ jesus Jesus 
uh, meaning God saves. So his mission to a degree describes him uh, to a degree, and but he has many other names that uh, describes what he does. But God saves is a specific name that he goes by and that we have power through Jesus Christ, uh, the Messiah. And so a very important thing is that he introduces himself. God has a, there's a problem on earth. Humanity, of course, has uh, defiled themselves through sin, through dis dis disobedience to God and Jesus, ultimately, who's the ultimate sacrifice, the propitiation, the Bible talks about in first uh, John, that he uh, uh, didn't come just to save um, the ones the ones he represented himself through in mm -hmm. reference to the Israelites, but he came to save the entire world. The, he came to save all the people. Uh, he came to be the sacrifice to save the people of the of the earth. So now those people who forfeit the what they would retain from the sacrifice given. So if you forfeit the sacrifice, there is no sacrifice for you. There's no other redeeming process mm -hmm. for you to be now fit to stand in the presence of the Father. Jesus says, if you know him, you know the Father. Mm -hmm. And so this is the God that we're talking about. We're talking about this God who has revealed himself to mankind so that mankind can know that there is a God that, that is um, stewarding man towards a specific end. And, and he's making himself known through the scripture, making himself known via the Holy Ghost, making himself known through the miracles and the different things that he is doing in the earth of, of in Jesus's day and now. Um, and so we are in position to interact with that supernatural God and ultimately come against this uh, nature, this sinful nature that is in us that is trying to get us to go in an opposite direction uh, than the good uh, direction that God is trying to lead all of the people that are obedient to him. And so what we're talking about ultimately in reference to this topic, we're talking about the, the bloodline. We're talking about not just the corruption that has happened in the bloodline in reference to um, what has happened through sin, the, 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 uh, what started with Adam and Eve, but ultimately is perpetuated and continues through the sin of people, the people sin and condemn themselves, that we, we, we are doing things that are not in the ways of God. And this is something that God is not pleased with. And God is giving us a remedy for us to not ultimately end up into the lake of fire, end up into hell. Uh, and so we have to take the, the antidote to, to, you know, so that we can ultimately be within his good graces. And so the, in reference to bloodline, what we're talking about, we were talking about earlier, my, my sisters and I uh, were talking about earlier uh, some very, very important things concerning uh, the, the bloodline and what is in the blood, the system within the body. The body in itself is a system, and you also have the blood itself, which is a system. The Bible talks about that. Um, the life of the body is in the blood. So we know that God comes to redeem us through the sacrificing of himself in the sense that he sheds blood to cover the transgression. We know the Bible says that love covers a multitude of sins. So his love covers the multitude of sins that we have done and now we have access to the father because of that redeeming element so this so uh so now sister um sister esther i i, I wanted you to kind of just introduce yourself and begin to talk about 
generational uh, bondage, generational curses, uh, the bloodline bondage, uh, but also talk about the solution, the solution to what we should know um, about this transformation that Jesus is trying to do in the, the, the body of the saint. Hi, I'm Esther. So um, the thing about generational curses is that um, a lot of the time, you know, if we are outside of the will of God, we will be blind to the fact that things like a generational curse is on our lives. So we won't know we won't notice the fact that hey my mom was like this or my grandma was like this or my aunt is like this and I'm like this mm. like you 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 don't catch it you just think because we were just talking about this you don't catch it you just think you know that's just the way that I am that's mm. just the way that I function right. um, so it's important that we break these these generational curses um, because um, one of the things we were talking about is how it's Two different. It's two types of generational curses. One is more so of a physical, um, to whereas, and someone commented this on one of my videos as well. They were talking about they were talking about cancer as well. Mm -hmm. You know, like or like in, any disease or stuff like that. It can be inherited. Like mm -hmm. this came mm -hmm. from like my parents. My parents were this way, and so I inherited this disease. And so that's it in the natural. That's what it can look like. Mm -hmm. um, and so it can. So the other way it can look two is as far as sins mm -hmm. like whether that be perversion whether that be anger whether that be um you know all types all types of things because you know anything that we do that is outside of god is considered sin so these things they are it's like it's it's trickle down it's trickle down over and over and over again and if we continue the cycle that um that is already in us so we one of the things we talk about is how it's, it's like in us to be this way it's in us to to do this it's in mm. me to talk this way it's in me to be angry to get to this extent mm -hmm. of anger it's in me to be to walk in this level of perversion it's in me to have this level of pride because it had because someone decided someone before me mm -hmm. and i spoke about this before someone before me decided they weren't going to break the curse someone before me could decide they were going to continue to walk in pride and the person before them decided they were co going to continue to walk in pride and so as long as mm -hmm. the curse continues as long as people keep making the decision oh i'm going to continue walking in this manner then things are just going to stay the way that they are and they're going to actually get worse they're mm -hmm. going to get worse you know your kids are going to walk in it as well because and that's what i was talking about like you position mm -hmm. your kids to walk in the sins of that came of the people that came before them mm -hmm. so as as the scripture says you know train, train up a child in the way that should, they should go mm -hmm. but as as what is happening is that people are positioning their kids in the way that they should not go like i'm positioning right. my child even though my child is not here i'm positioning them to um i'm bringing on the curse to them and I may not say that out of my mouth, but you know, through our actions, it, it, it shows that. It shows that. So it's not as simple as, oh, you know, Uncle Johnny or Uncle Doe, you know, he just he just always he just always smoking or he just mm -hmm. always on drugs. No, this is like this that's in you guys to do. Mm -hmm. You like people people before you, that's mm -hmm. all they that's all they did. So it's not mm -hmm. as simple as that. Right. Um another thing that I was talking about before is that, you know, a lot of people think that um breaking a generational curse is wealth or success like mm. this is how i break this curse in my life you know i don't want my family to have to go through poverty i don't want my family to have to deal with this so i'm gonna be the so in their minds what it means to be an interruption is me me um fulfilling some type of role uh, some type of um standard i placed in my mind of success so I'm gonna keep trying to fulfill this standard this standard and I'm gonna and, and when I when I get to that level I'm gonna feel like oh yeah I'm breaking this generational curse of poverty off of mm -hmm. my life when you're mm -hmm. actually that's not that's actually not right. that's that's the wrong way to do it because we yeah that's that <laughs> so we were so I was talking about in, in my other video how you know obedience is the only way that we can break the curse so you can't break it by becoming successful you can't break it by you know by chasing after this or chasing after that like it, it that's not that's not how it happens because poverty may be a generational curse in your bloodline like, like people may always be poor 
or or like you just don't know how to um handle your finances mm -hmm. but you're going about it the wrong way because you you have a worldly mindset that says oh this is how you break this this is how you break this you know your family members tell you you know, you need to you need to make something out of yourself. You need to do you need to do you need to you need to go to college. Right. If you go to college, you 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 know, in high school, that's I, I, that a lot of that is was what I heard. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm the first person. You know, when when you at when you're at graduation, they they say things like that. Oh, this person is the first person to graduate high school in their family, or this person like that's not really breaking a generational curse. Mm -hmm. Like like that's not doing anything. So you oh, this person is, is the first person to go to college. That's not that's not doing. That's your worldly. Way of 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 addressing of, problem. Yeah, mm. that's not that you're 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 actually deferring mm -hmm. from the problem. You're mm -hmm. deferring. You're not really addressing the fact. Oh no, this generational curse is here because of sin. Mm -hmm. Because of Nana didn't change it. Her her mom didn't change. Like nobody's changing it. Mm -hmm. Nobody's changing it. And so it's gonna get worse. And so um, one of the things. So we were talking about how. It's important to break it. We have to break it. The way we break it is by is with the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus breaks these curses off of our lives. Obedience mm. breaks. It. So when I walk in obedience, I do the opposite of what. It's. So when I walk in when I walk in obedience, it, my, the curse it's in me to do this. It's in me to just walk in lust. So, so since it's in me to walk in lust, when I when I tear that thought down. And I do the opposite. I obey the Lord. I'm breaking that chain because I'm because because sin can't be where obedience is. It doesn't. It's not in the same thing. So mm -hmm. when I do the opposite, when I do contrary, that's me getting the freedom. But as long as I mm -hmm. am under submission to this way of thinking, as long as I'm under submission to this worldly way of doing things, I'm not going to be able to get free because I think that the world is my answer when Jesus is my answer. Amen. 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 <laughs> Glory to God. So, sister, introduce yourself as well. Okay. And, um, you know, just continue to speak on uh, the generational bloodline bondage that we are seeing each and every day and, and how people are glorying in bondage and not realizing that it's something that they should be ashamed of, not something that they should glory in. Okay. So I am Princess Liberty. Um, so I want to just piggyback off of what my sister was talking about, um, as far as just the bloodline and just the effects that it has on our generation and on our family line. Mm -hmm. Now, many people don't understand what a generational curse is. So what a generational curse is, is something that's repeated. Mm -hmm. It's a cycle. It's like a, a, a trend, meaning like, I think someone said it already, like, okay, my, my father was an adulterer. Um, you know, my grandfather was an adult or mm -hmm. my grandmother or, you know, and now I'm dealing with the same thing or mm -hmm. there's like a, a generational curse of divorce. And mm -hmm. it seems like I'm OK with that. Like I'm mm -hmm. justified and we make excuses. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, my my grandma did it. You know, my grandpa did it. My mama did it. You know, I'm, I'm OK. Not really looking for a way out because mm -hmm. I don't think many people understand that mm -hmm. it is an actual generational curse or that it's within the bloodline because like she said they look at the success part of it like no i'm gonna i'm gonna go off i'm gonna be something with myself i'm gonna make my mom proud i'm gonna break the the, the family curse by by doing this i'm not gonna have a child out of wedlock mm. you know i'm gonna i'm gonna wait till marriage or whatever like that um you know i'm gonna stop cussing you know I, sometimes mm -hmm. i hear people say that i'm gonna i'm gonna change i'm gonna turn over a new leaf as mm -hmm. the word calls it mm -hmm. and that just pretty much means okay i'm gonna stop cussing I'm going to stop being disrespectful. I'm going to stop stealing. I'm going to stop lying on my taxes. You know, I'm going to stop, you know, manipulating people. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just mm -hmm. stop doing certain things. But there's no real change happening on the inside. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to the bloodline, I heard it said that the blood, it, it, it is the life of the body. And we don't understand what's in the blood. What's mm -hmm. in the blood is controlling us. Mm -hmm. We need the blood of Jesus to undo a lot of things. So... Mm -hmm. The, the stuff that's in our blood from our family line, we have to break it, but we have to want to break it because it's controlling our lives and it's opening up the door for destruction. Mm -hmm. It's making way for the enemy to come in and destroy our lives and also our generation. Like, mm -hmm. you know, many people, they want a different life for their children, but they're not really like, they're not trying to make no changes in their life, no real changes. Like, okay, yeah. like. For instance, I'll give you all my own personal testimony. Like my grandma had my mom at a very early age. Mm -hmm. My mom had me at a very early age. So 
it was already expected with me that, okay, you're going to have a child early because even the world can see patterns. Mm -hmm. Even the world understands cycles. Right. Like, you're going to be like your Uncle Jimmy. Right. Or, you know, you're going to be just like your father, you know, Tim or whatever. Right. Right. So even the world can can see the pattern. So by the grace of God, I was able to prove people, prove people wrong by not allowing that to fall on me. Me having a child out of what, like at an early at an early age, I was able to break that. So many of you, you, you have the, you have the ability and the power to break it. Now you don't have to accept it just because failure is in your family mm -hmm. and everybody's okay with it. We mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. we're so like desensitized to failure. Well, right. you know, it's life. Well, it, it happens. It's in me to do. It doesn't have to be in you to do because we have the blood of Jesus mm -hmm. that washes and cleanses us from our, our sins. And, I want to even add that even in our bloodline lies our identity. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. one of the ways that the enemy likes to come and destroy us because Jesus said that he comes but to still kill and destroy. Right. So our in our bloodline and in the generations, um, it's already things set in order for us to do. Like it's already set in order for me to, to fall in this area, for me to get a divorce, um, for me to fail in this area, for... You know, me to fall into drug addiction. Like, it's 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 like that door, like my sister said earlier, sin lines at the door. It's already waiting for you at the door. Mm -hmm. You just have to open it. But the moment that you do, you're opening up yourself to a, a, a world of, of destructions. Mm -hmm. So in order, to, in order to break that, you really have to first acknowledge that there are generational curses on your family line and that you can't be okay with it. You have to be the one to break it. It takes for it takes that one person to stand up and to say, no, I'm not going to allow this to go on anymore. This stops with me. Mm -hmm. You have to believe that you're here for a purpose and that you're you're not just a mistake. You're not just someone that's going to keep it going, but that you're someone that's going to break it and that it does stop with you and it will stop with you. And you have to you have to be really serious and know like this has to end now. And and you have to. You have to be serious about it being broken and allowing, allowing a, a new blood to be infused in you, the blood of Jesus. You mm -hmm. have to disconnect from your bloodline. You have to renounce it, denounce it, mm. repent, yes. turn, turn from the sins that your ancestors did. Because many of us, we had to repent for things that our ancestors did that mm -hmm. we're now facing right now today. Mm -hmm. So you have to, you have to repent for them, repent for the things that you did. Go to the Lord and ask the Lord to, to forgive you, to cleanse you, to break the curses, to break the mindsets, to break mm -hmm. the beliefs mm -hmm. and the perspective that we picked up because that's another a generational curse, another thing that's in the bloodline perspective. Mm -hmm. Believing that, you know, right. we, we got we to gotta dress a certain way to maintain the family's reputation and the, the family's look or, you know, blood is sticking in water. We got to. We all one go down, we all go down. Like hmm. if you fight, we all fight. So you know, let me know if I need to be down at the end of, in the, in the end of the corner. Like <laughs> let me know or whatever. But that that has to that has to be broken. We have to disconnect from even those those mindsets. How the world tell you, you know, to follow follow your heart. Mm -hmm. Like you know, follow your heart. You know, don't trust no man. You know, be your own woman. Be your mm -hmm. own kind. Mm -hmm. You have to. You got to disconnect from that. And be connected to the blood of Jesus that can infuse you with the power to love, with the power mm -hmm. to forgive, with dominion, with authority that, mm -hmm. that many of you need to fight the curses and the demonic spirits that are over your family line so that you can be free and that your, your generation, your seeds can be free as well in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we are seeing the, the fact that even though these things are in our blood, even though there are things that you can physically see, as my sister is saying, in reference to cycles, cycles throughout the generations. One of the um, things that we have to remember is that even when you are in a particular, you know, you, you, you can see a generational curse or whatnot. Uh, but one of the things that the enemy does is he, al he, he allows you and he likes for you to engage in the generational curses. Mm -hmm. And guess what? There's a familiar way or a familiarity about uh, you operating within the generational yeah. curse. So some people can, you know, because the devil wants you to love the generational curse, wants Except you to it. love and accept and in, in a hopeless type way. Uh, allow yourself to be to be drawn away by this generational curse. And so 
the the thing is the familiar parts about it will make you think that oh it's something that's acceptable it's something that i should do it's mm -hmm. something that you know it, it just comes so naturally mm -hmm. it, it comes naturally for me to to act this way it, it's natural for me to be this it's i mean it's it's very natural for me to curse people out it's, mm -hmm. it's natural for me to just be flirtatious and and cause yeah. men to fall over me you know it's 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 very natural for me to 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 um, just uh, make money and, and give myself to mammon give myself to this to, to this spiritual God that I don't even know is a spiritual God but I'm giving myself to the pursuit of money and, and and people will say well oh yeah yeah he's he's doing good he's doing right by his family he mm -hmm. needs to yeah. work 24 hours a day in order to you know produce for his family you know he mm -hmm. oh yeah if a man doesn't work they they won't eat mm -hmm. they will even use the verses within the bible and pervert <laughs> them oh if a man don't work he don't eat he he should work work but they pervert the work part and they say oh yeah work all day totally he comes home tired and and full of dirt oh man that's a real man he's he's walking in the responsibility that he's supposed to you know walk in because you know he's he's laying it all down for his family but he's going straight to hell doing that too because there's a balance there is a understanding of who you are first and then everything is subject to who you are. Mm -hmm. If you are a servant to, to 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 Christ, then everything has to submit to that identity. But if you're not that, if you want to just walk in the ways of the world and 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 do the things of the world, then of course you're you're going to live a life that um, that 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 represents. Um, you doing anything you can, you can do anything but but the problem with you doing anything is that you're not responsible or you're not in control of the ultimate results that you get from that you may have been a good father good uncle good this good that because you provided financially but guess what if you're not walking in your spiritual identity you're going to ultimately uh, produce something that is not in the image of Christ and for that you ultimately won't inherit eternal life and so and and those that you affect will see that example and you will be perverting their image to what Christ to what God really is and looks like mm -hmm. and so you're gonna be a bad example even though the wor world says that you're a good example mm -hmm. so this is the perversion that we're seeing in this whole self preservation type mentality um, that is at the root of these generational curses and so um, so let's talk about uh, um, this the Christ bloodline let's talk about the uh, the engrafting into the faith the Word of God um, tells us uh, about the engrafted word that is able to save your souls in the in the book of James and so that, that that's something that means that there is an implanting of the word of God in a born-again believing Christian that produces fruit in their life that produces characteristics that pollute that produces traits that produces an identity beliefs that ultimately um, cause the person to walk in the identity and uh, be uh, a person that uh, embodies the ways of God. And so uh, there's uh, a woman in the Bible, uh, Esther. And so in the book of Esther, there's something very powerful um, that we see. Esther, of course, she being herself an interruption. And so when we say interruption, what do we mean? We mean that there is a pattern or there's a way that the family is going, but yet God chooses you specifically to interrupt the direction of the family and has a specific work for you to do. And that work is within his identity for you to ultimately be a son or daughter of God so that you can ultimately be pleasing with 
um, pleasing to him and for you to be engaged in the work of God in reference to the transformation of the world. And so interruption is something that every Christian is to a degree unless you um, come from a direct background of of people that were saved. If you're a mother and father that was saved, you're a continuation of something that ultimately was a birth of God. But if you, your parents were not saved and you are saved and you're uh, full of the Holy Ghost and you're you know, a born again believer, you ultimately are an interruption. So you're interrupting the generational downward spiral of corruption you're interrupting that and you're going the opposite direction into life in christ and so that's very important for all of us that come from unsaved parents so uh in reference to esther a very powerful thing happens um as she uh is the interruption that is chosen for a specific task uh, you, you have the king at that time, the Persian king at that time, King Ahasuerus, who gets in a situation to where his wife at the time, Vashti, disrespects him. And they, they take that disrespect very, uh, and they, they don't take it lightly. They, they take it very harshly and they uh, go in and, and remove her from her queen position. And they go out, they send word out throughout the kingdom for young maidens to come and be ultimately candidates or like a contest to see who would be the next queen. And so what happens is there is a process that every woman would have to go through in reference to their preparation to be a possible candidate to be queen. So they go through this six month process of, of being purified with oils, uh, myrrh, frankincense or whatnot. And, um, you know, so it's a year process of of many different things that they're going through, uh, many clothes that they're wearing, jewels that they're wearing, things that are being given to them so that they can um, have the attire of a queen, of the attire of someone that the king, King Ahasuerus in a, in a sense, would delight in. And so Esther is ultimately chosen, but the, the awesome thing about what the women are going through as far as their process is that this is similar to what we go through as, you know, the word of God calls us the bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. So because we are the bride of Christ, uh, there are specific things that we are going through as far as our transformation process on earth. So as we are being transformed, God is uh, doing things to prepare us, changing our personality, changing our characteristics, changing uh, the way uh, we deal with our emotions, changing the way we view things, see things, our perspectives. Mm -hmm. And he's helping us to be fit brides fit uh, even though we are all together the bride of christ he's making us each and every one of us fit to stand before the king of kings stand before god stand before the father and so that's a, a, a that's precious because we go through these things um and it's just uh, it's like what we see in the book of esther to where the women go through this year process of them being prepared to meet the king and so it's uh, important that the true Christian takes on the mentality that they ought to be transformed, that they ought to not come into Christianity thinking that they will just um, take the old and polish it up and try to make it new, um, to, uh, try to bring the world into uh, the kingdom. Mm -hmm. it, that, that's not something that should be done. That's not something that should be popular, especially within the church. But we see the church wanting to bring in things that they have not renounced from the world. And so this is what feeds the generational curse. Mm -hmm. This is what feeds the, the, the false perspectives. Mm -hmm. This is what feeds the, 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 the recreation of bloodline bondage. This is what feeds it so you you have the so you, when you don't renounce these things that are in the world the the world is uh, in a very 
uh, cunning way seeping, of course the enemy is at the root of this, seeping through your profession of faith to get you to uh, walk or be or act or think in a way that is not uh, born again. That is not, this is why the word of God talks about being renewed in the spirit of your mind in the book of Ephesians. And so there is a renewing, a transforming. So of course we know, be not conformed to the world, but be transformed by, by the renewing of your mind. Uh, first Peter, um, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he who has called you is holy. So be holy in all manner of conversation. So we have this transformation language, this transformation identity that is being proclaimed throughout the word that people are ignoring, people are willingly participating in other things that are hindering their development in Christ and not, posi not positioning them to be good representatives. Uh, as Peter says, obedient children, as obedient children, you know, not recreating myself. You know, I, I, I did the whole rap thing in the world. Now I want to bring that in the church. I, I did the, uh, uh, the, the stripping thing in the world. And, and now I want to dress like a stripper in the church. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I did the whole manipulating thing in the world. And, and now I want to manipulate manipulate scripture mm -hmm. and and get people to do what I want them to do. You know what I'm saying? I, I, you, 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 you did all sorts of things in the world and you don't renounce those perspectives of fear and that mentality and you allow it to, to recreate the bloodline. Uh, so you have that system, as I was talking about in the beginning, the system or the identity within the blood that is not uh, fully saturated by the blood of Jesus, because the blood of Jesus is what uh, we, we, we at times we talk about pleading the blood of Jesus. We, we we're we're proclaiming the fact that the power of Jesus um, exists in His sacrifice, mm -hmm. exists in His blood, and so people um, can plead the blood of Jesus and and uh, ultimately see power given to them, grace given to them, strength given to them so they can continue in the identity of God and not the identity of the flesh, mm -hmm. in the flesh. And so, uh, Sister Esther, uh, I want you to just to continue. I have a question. Um, and the question is, why? What are some of the other reasons? Why is it difficult? Um, why is this... Uh, double-mindedness happening. You know, one of the things that we were talking about before was how um, how people can feed the generational curse. People can feed the false perspectives and identities. What would you say about that what, um, in reference to that specific question? Um, I think it's true that it is possible to feed a generational curse. It's almost like... Um, if, if okay, it's almost like feeding a monster. Like you, like mm -hmm. the you know, you know that your flesh wants you to do one thing, and so you it, like it's like when you feed your flesh, it, 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 it there's a good feeling, there's a good feeling to it. Mm -hmm. So as far as our soul goes, in our soul, there's a lot of familiar familiarity. Mm -hmm. So because of that, when you act out in your flesh and when you um feed these generational curses it's gonna like he said before you know you when you when you act in it there's a a a feeling of oh this feels good because you're it's, it's familiar to you because it's in you to act in that so like like she spoke about too you know once you act in it it's like sin lies at the door so mm. as soon as you act in it it's like boom you don't have to do it over and over again you don't have to smoke weed over and over again for you to become an addict like no you start you have that one smoke and now you're gone because the mm. enemy doesn't care the like after he gets you after he gets he, he just wanted you to do it one time and he like like when he, so as far as mm. the enemy goes so when he sees People who are readily in sin, he doesn't really pay attention to those people. Oh no, that's just that's just what you're gonna continue doing. Mm -hmm. That's just what you do. It's the person who has not did that, who has who 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 has is not is not necessarily 
acting in that who, who who hasn't done it so as if we're talking about the the drug the, the the person who tries drugs before they they weren't they weren't doing drugs so then so then the enemy can say that the enemy is trying to get them to do drugs but once they do it it's like oh okay now i got you now you're going to continue doing it now you're going to continue doing it so it's important mm -hmm. that we not feed the generational curse and because like i said before you know you'll keep acting in it it, it, it now you now the now the people that comes after you they're gonna continue acting in mm -hmm. it because it's like it's you're like feeding a, yeah mm -hmm. you, you're feeding you're feeding this demon you're feeding you're feeding your flesh and you know one of the things about um feeding monsters the more and more you feed it the more and more it controls you so mm -hmm. the more the more I give into this, it's gonna be it's gonna become me in a greater way. Like mm -hmm. like you're really gonna feel bound to it. You're really gonna feel mm -hmm. like this is who you are because you keep walking in it. You keep walking in it. And so when we like I said before, like when you make a decision to change directions, it it it, it you feel lighter. You feel lighter. You don't you don't feel like I have to I don't have to continue walking in perversion. I don't have mm -hmm. to continue walking in the in the same lust. I don't have to continue that because we know we know that there are people in our families who um, they continue this cycle. And, and like my sister talked about it, you know, they don't see that as an issue. You don't see incest as an issue. Mm. You don't see that as an issue. But in, in what a lot of families do is they try to keep it under that. Like, like they'll, it's like a family secret. Mm. You'll go around each other for the holidays and everything. And, you know, nobody will ever speak on what happened. Nobody will ever talk about it. People will take it to their graves mm. before they speak up about it. So they'd mm. rather be fake around each other. And, mm. and then they'll just throw out the, the, what she said, you know. Um, blood is thicker than water, yet these things are happening in the family, yet mm. nobody talks about it. Mm. And they're going to continue letting it go on. They're going to continue letting it go on. And, the, and in that ignoring of the generational curse, in that ignoring of the, of the very relevant sin that is happening here, then you, then you feed it. You feed it. And, you, and, and another thing is, you know, when these things happen in your family, hmm. the more and more you feed it, you know, this person may have um, been molested or this person may have gone through some type of trauma mm -hmm. in their family. And as they get older, like my, me and my sister were talking about earlier, now you're gay. How are you gay? Oh, because of, because this happened and nobody addressed this. Nobody ever addressed this. Nobody ever, there was never any 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 type of coming mm -hmm. together. No, mm -hmm. no. And with, and, and the thing is, the and so when you get out into the world, the world tell you, you got to turn to drugs to get the, to, to, for you to get your mind off that because mm -hmm. it'll keep coming to you. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the past of what happened to you is going to keep coming. Mm -hmm. So you got to you got to do this. You got to do this. You got to get high. You got to do music. You got to You got to you got to find something to overcompensate in so that mm -hmm. you don't feel that you don't want to feel that. So that is what drug use is. Mm -hmm. You know, you try to get you try to forget everything for a moment. Mm -hmm. You'll forget everything for a moment. Then after you're done, it's back. So you got to do it again. Mm -hmm. right. You got to do it again and again right. and again until, and, and, until you know, you can't take it anymore. So, so you'll wait a few minutes and then you will do it again. So there's a, there's, there's really an, that we have to really be serious about breaking these things in our lives mm -hmm. because there, because the enemy is looking for you to continue in it. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, he's mm -hmm. looking for you to continue in it. And if you know if you know the Spirit of God has identified specific generational curses in your family line right. and you have not addressed it, you will be held accountable because mm -hmm. you know. You mm -hmm. know the sinner that this what we can say about the sinner, a lot of them don't know. They don't know. Mm -hmm. They are in ignorance to what is going on. Mm -hmm. But when the Lord has revealed things to you, oh no, this is happening because of this. Right. You're this way because of this, and mm -hmm. you don't change. Oh no, you're feeding it, and it's gonna continue. Right. It's going to continue. It's going to continue. These, these, um, these things that these cycles that happen in our families—they're not just something that we hide up under the rug. Right. No, those are things that we that we take to the Lord. Oh, it's in my family to be this. This this level of perversion is in my family. Mm -hmm. This level of perversion is in my family, and if I continue, my kids are gonna walk in that same level of perversion. They're gonna they're, they're, they might even walk in it worse, you know, because because um you know as the scripture talks about in Matthew, um how the demons come with more. Oh no, they might they might. They might walk in it to a greater degree mm -hmm. because yeah. of my lack of obedience in this area. Because of my lack of obedience, this 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 doesn't just have to be in a household with um, unsaved people, but this can be in a household with 
with professed people. That's where the most bondage mm -hmm. is, you know, in the in those type of households. They go to church, but there are things that are occurring behind the scenes, and and, and they don't address it. Oh, I, 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 this is just who we are. That nobody mm -hmm. talks about this. Everybody knows about it, right. mm -hmm. but nobody talks about it. Like, like we're not going, we're not going to address the fact that this happened. We and we're not going to. So we're not going to address the fact that this has happened to this person. Yet we know, we see the, we see the effects mm -hmm. of it in this person's life. We right. see it. We see the we 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 just think oh oh we we, we okay he gay it's okay it's all right that's he right. just that's just the way he is we mm -hmm. have to let him be him we're not yeah. going to isolate yeah. him we're not going to do that no yeah. you know but you don't you don't address the fact that this happened to him nobody right. said nobody right. tried to give him any type of closure even mm -hmm. though he couldn't get closure without Jesus Christ right. but there right. was not there was there was nothing for him mm -hmm. the you, the family gave him nothing so he had to turn from the family and go to the world mm -hmm. and we know that the world was not going to give him nothing either but a false sense of peace mm -hmm. oh you got to do this you got to do that you got to maybe you need some therapy maybe you got to pay somebody a grand to go sit on their couch and and and, and get some therapy and it's not going to help mm -hmm. because it's in your soul like oh like this is this is something that's happening mm -hmm. internally mm -hmm. we can't just we can't just make it we can't just tell the guy oh you just need to worry about this worry about this paper worry about this money worry about mm -hmm. the success don't worry about that i know you have some things that's going on don't worry you know pour it out and see your music Pour it out and see your music. Pour it mm -hmm. out and see your poetry. Mm -hmm. Pour it out and see stuff like that. Don't, don't, don't really deal with the pain. Don't really deal with the fact that this is a curse. Mm -hmm. Just act as if it's not happening. Mm -hmm. And that, and people will, people go to hell acting as if it's not help, happening. Mm -hmm. Like they, they just disregard it. They disregard it. The people around them disregard it. Mm. Hmm. Amen. Uh, powerful. Uh, so, sis, sister, Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Princess Liberty. All right. So, what else can we, you know, really derive from this? Because we are seeing the, you know, even as my sister saying, uh, within the church, within families, within these blood thicker than water uh, members, people, we see the corruption in that. We see the hidden things of dishonesty in that. So what else can we say in reference to that? And so, and, and also the solution, this, this bloodline bondage curse, you know, we have to talk more about the breaking of this. Okay. So what I would say is that whatever you feed will grow. Mm -hmm. Whatever you feed will grow. Whatever you reap, you will sow. Um, a lot has been said, but one thing that I want to add is that even though, even, even if you may know and you may be aware of the cycles and the generational curses and you don't break them, I know a lot of people will try to, um, make a change for their, for the sake of their children. Meaning I don't want my child to grow up the way I did, mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. you know, I don't want them to struggle like how I struggled. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. I don't want them to grow up in a neighborhood that I grew up with and how I turned out. So mm -hmm. even with that, people will try to make changes, but not really confront the root. Cause I know earlier we were talking about the root being sin. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's easy for me to move my child from one city to the next city. You know, it's easy for me to switch up their clothing. It's easy for me to give them everything that they want. But if I'm not, if I'm not confronting and addressing the root issue in one way, you will know, cause some people may say, well, I don't, I don't know if I have generational curse. I don't know if I'm repeating a cycle. You will see it in your character. You will mm -hmm. see it in your personality. Meaning as it was already said, like, why do I feel promiscuous? Why do I, why do I feel that when I go into a certain atmosphere, I want to dress a certain way because I want the attention of men. Mm -hmm. Or why do I feel like I just can't help but to lay on my taxes or my food stamp? Or why do I feel like I just, I can't help but to hold grudges against people. Once mm -hmm. you cross me one time, mm -hmm. that's it. And it's mm -hmm. just, it's just in me to not want to forgive. Mm -hmm. Like you hurt me so deep that mm -hmm. I don't think I could ever forgive you. Like that's, that's a, that's an issue that needs to be confront it and address mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. many people are not confronting it as i stated because they're either oblivious or you're you're okay you're okay with it but you're really not okay because you're trying to cope with the effects of it mm -hmm. meaning you know this 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 generational curse is playing now and now you feel lonely you're dealing with depression you're dealing with anxiety because mm -hmm. you didn't deal with it properly but you're gonna turn as it was stated you're gonna turn to drugs and it's going to give you that temporary buzz, that temporary feel. Mm -hmm. But once it wear off, you're back to dealing with that real, that real issue that only Jesus Christ can, 
can save you from. So the issue with, with the curse and the reason why it's such a bad thing, because you may say, why? What's, what's, what's the big deal? Like, why is it such a big deal? The enemy wants to destroy your life. He wants to destroy your generation. He wants to destroy your seed. For, number, for the, the first thing, you look like God. God made you in his image and in his life and you look like God. The enemy wants to destroy your life. He wants to destroy your, your lineage. He wants mm -hmm. to destroy your identity. Mm -hmm. Everything about you, he wants to destroy. That's why he tries to attack us at such a young age. Yes. Coming in when we're so vulnerable, we don't know anything. We haven't really tasted of the world yet. He wants to come and like destroy our minds and our perspective, making you feel Yes, I'm a male, but I feel like a female. Or yes, I'm a female, but I feel like a male. Or I I, I feel like mm. I feel like I want to hurt people. Why do I want to hurt myself? Why do I feel suicidal? Mm -hmm. He wants to come in and destroy you. And these are generational curses. This came through an open door. Mm -hmm. Someone did not stop this in mm -hmm. this trap. Mm -hmm. You have the opportunity to stop this in this trap. As you heard mentioned about being an interruption, mm -hmm. you have to, you have to stop it. You have to break it so that not only you can be free, but that your lineage can be free. And the way, the way you get free is by, as I stated, acknowledging the curse, acknowledging the cycle, mm -hmm. you know, that thing that repeats itself that you keep going through every so season, like, why do I keep going through this every season? I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. every time I turn around, you know, I find myself in a relationship and I keep getting my heart broken mm -hmm. or, you know, I find myself keep losing a job or, you know, every time I turn around, I'm sick because I speak death over myself because mm -hmm. it's in me. It's, it's in me to do that. You know, I grew up hearing my, not me personally, but, you know, you may say I grew up hearing my, my grandmother speak life about her, uh, you know, speak death over herself. Like, man, you, you know, y'all make me sick. You, you're like your daddy. I can't, mm -hmm. you know, I can't wait for your mama to come and get you, your daddy to get out of jail. You know, they, you're used to them speaking death. Or, you know, maybe you grew up hearing your grandma gossip and that's all you know. Like, all you know is, is gossip. Like, I just can't help but the gossip. It's in me to do. It's been, in, it's been engrafted. Mm -hmm. And it needs to be unengrafted mm -hmm. out of you. Mm -hmm. You need the blood of Jesus to infuse your body to the point where all you all you know is Jesus. All that comes out of your pores, mm -hmm. all that falls out from your generation is the love of God, the righteousness of God, the glory of God, the power of God, the dominion of God. So it has to, it has to be broken, but someone has to do it. You can't say, well, I've already fell enough in my life. I've already mm -hmm. got divorced or mm -hmm. I've already had a child out of wedlock mm -hmm. or, you know, I've already done these things. Don't, mm -hmm. don't let that stop you. Don't let that be an excuse because as my sister was saying, like, you're going to be without excuse when you stand before the Lord. So don't feel yeah. like, you know, I, I've, I've done too much already. I'll just leave it for my child. It may not make it to your child. Like, right. your child may not be given the same opportunity. Like, their generation may be a lot worse. So you're able to hear what we're saying. So this is the opportunity for you to break this. God has given you an open invitation. The enemy don't want you to hear this. The enemy wants you to turn this off. Right. But God is saying, no, hear what they're saying because I want you to be free. Mm -hmm. I'm presenting to you freedom. I don't want this to continue through your bloodline. I want you to be free from addictions. I want you to be free from drug use. Mm -hmm. I want you to be free from fornication. Mm -hmm. I want you to be free from suicide and depression mm -hmm. and anger and bitterness and those thoughts of murder mm -hmm. that rises up every now and then. Mm -hmm. He wants you to be free from that. And he wants it done today, not tomorrow. Tomorrow may not be guaranteed. So mm -hmm. what you have to do, you have to go before the Lord and con confess that you need that you need help. And like it was said, most of this is amongst the believers, those who are in Christ. And they have issues, they have characteristics, they have flaws that are there, that are present, that needs to be broken. The mindset that tells you this is still okay. Mm -hmm. As my brother was saying, you feel like it's okay to still have one foot in the world and one foot in the church. Mm -hmm. It's okay for me to listen to a little bit of gospel music, but still listen to some Christian rap as well. It's okay for me to still watch TV shows, just the one with no cursing. Mm -hmm. You know, the mm -hmm. ones with, you know, no sex scenes. And it's, it's still okay for me to watch ungodly movie you know just the one that throw god in there every now and then yeah. mm -hmm. it's okay so you have to you gotta you gotta address this you gotta confront it confrontation mm -hmm. you gotta confront it it's, it's a part of you that needs to be gone that needs to be cut off you need to sever all ties of your bloodline mm -hmm. everything that comes to your mind 
everything that you've seen play out in your own character. You know, there's stuff that you may do that may remind you of your mom. Like, there's mm -hmm. stuff that I see play out, and I'm like, my mom used to do this, or I saw this character trait in my mom. This needs to be broken. This is this is ungodly. You have to you have to address it. And you have to be honest with the Lord so that the Lord can purge you. So that as my brother was studying that scripture in Romans 12, 2, having your mind renewed, not being conformed to this world, because the world has shaped our minds so bad that sometimes it's hard to see the truth. Right. It's hard to see what's on us what's keeping us from going forward mm -hmm. it's like we're hitting a barrier like why can't i go forward so mm -hmm. you have to allow the lord to renew your mind to purge and to cut away everything from your bloodline everything that you picked up from the world so that you can be free so that your lineage can be free so that there could be a clean bloodline running through your vein, not one that's been tampered with mm -hmm. or one that's been contaminated mm -hmm. or one that has, you know, been just corrupted. Mm -hmm. You need a, a free flowing bloodline of Jesus so that you can be free mm -hmm. and that you can stay free in mm -hmm. Jesus name. And the same for your children. You want a lineage that is blessed. Mm -hmm. not cursed mm -hmm. you don't want it to be said that that family was cursed like Achan mm -hmm. that lineage got cut short you don't want it to be so bad that your lineage the Lord is looking like this generation is so bad I'm gonna just end it here I'm not mm -hmm. gonna allow this person to have kids I'm just gonna stop it here and that's just gonna be the end of this lineage because mm -hmm. it was so it was so corrupt no one was willing to stand up and say you know what I see what's happening in my family and I realize it's not good. I realize it's brought destruction in my life. And it needs to stop. And it needs to stop now. Because I need to be free. You have to You have to want to be free. How much longer are you going to continue to allow the enemy to destroy your life? How much longer are you going to allow the sins of your ancestors to, to run your life and to ruin your life? Mm -hmm. How much more? You, you got to want it. Mm -hmm. you, you have to want to be right. free. It can be mm -hmm. broken. It can happen. The blood of Jesus washes our sins. His blood cleanses you from everything. So you, you got to want to be free. And it, it starts today. It starts right now. Right. Right. Amen. Okay. Um, go ahead, sis. I was going to say, um, that was powerful. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say, because I was thinking, I, I've been, I was, so one of the things that I believe is that um, as far as like one of, gener one of the generational curses, um, I believe that lukewarmness mm. can be a generational curse because you know just from my personal experience you can you can see you can see the people that came before you yes. like your like your 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 aunt and your uncle and your grandma like you see when you grow up when you when you when, you, when you're when you're a child and you grow up and all you see is your parents your parents acting this way and then they go to church and they, and, and and they don't they don't have any type of holiness about them they mm. don't they they don't tell you they don't they don't try to tell you about God they don't try to tell you about the Bible mm. they don't try to tell you about scriptures but they still go to church they'll go to church every now and then mm. so you'll see them go to church every now and then but right. you'll see them at the club as well and that is sending like one of my one of the things my pastor said um, a few months ago was um, some things are taught, other things are caught. Like my, right. I don't have to teach my child. Right. I don't have to specifically say out of my mouth, oh, you can go, you can be worldly and go to church. I'm not going to say that out of my mouth, but I'm going to do that with my actions. And so mm -hmm. when my child sees that, they're going to think, oh, that's just what a Christian is. Mm -hmm. When before right. I came to Christ, I thought that's what a Christian was. Like, oh no, you don't have to. And, and so since I thought that's what a Christian was, when I saw other Christians, I would think, Oh no, they're doing too much. That's just right. that's like you're just right. doing too much. Right. That's not right. yeah. Right. Like you're not you don't you don't have to do all that to be saved right. because the people around me didn't do all that to be saved. No, they 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 still talk about heaven. They still mm -hmm. you know they would curse, but they will still talk about God every now and then. It will be a little carnal, mm -hmm. but they will still do it. And mm -hmm. that was like they were sending it was send mixed Mix signal. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. But I would still mm -hmm. catch some things like oh okay okay. So that became my normal. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know about scripture like like that. I would go to church every mm -hmm. now and then, but I didn't know. I didn't really. Y'all, y'all gonna think that. Y'all gonna think that I'm <laughs> But you know, before I, I I I didn't know so much about. I I never even I never had read a Bible, but I was at I, I like I said I would go every now and then. You know, I was so confused. I thought Mary and Jesus was married. 
Like I like I'm like I like okay. I, I, I I didn't know I didn't know I didn't know I didn't know anything. Nobody ever <laughs> nobody ever sat down and said, "Hey, this is this is what this is this is what this means." I would I would hear some names in the Bible every now and then, mm -hmm. but it was never like nobody ever tried to help me. Nobody ever tried to teach me the ways of God. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever tried mm -hmm. to do that. The closest thing I ever got to that. You know that was a that was a messy situation too. Right. So every so my experiences and 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 the things that I saw around me they didn't shape me for 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 it to be a son of God. They didn't shape me to be a woman of God. So when people mm -hmm. so when somebody can ask me, oh how did, how how do you know that Jesus Christ is the only way? Mm -hmm. Because I did things were not set up for me to become a son. Things were, mm -hmm. I, my life I didn't I didn't come from a Christian household. Right. Things were not set. That was nothing but grace. Mm -hmm. So since there was nothing but grace, it was. I was this way. I was this way. I'm not that way anymore. Yeah. There was no. There was no. There was no tampered. There was. There was nothing around it to push me in the direction of God. Mm -hmm. Nothing at all. When I tell you guys, I didn't know anything about the Bible. <laughs> I didn't know anything about the Bible. I didn't. It was. It was. I didn't know anything. It mm -hmm. took one phone call to get me to come to this church and now i'm at this church and now i'm being exposed to the truth one phone call one like the, that was the hand of god that was the hand of god i was i was i was I, if you if you would have known me you wouldn't have mm -hmm. thought i even you i, I because Ooh, after Jesus. like getting mm -hmm. older i was i started to know more but i was still in the world mm -hmm. and if you would have saw me you wouldn't have think you would have you you wouldn't have thought that I knew about Jesus at all. Right. So when I would be in classrooms and I and I knew something when I found out something about something about the truth hmm. and I would still be in the world when I would be in classrooms and me and my friends are talking about um talking about whatever, whatever worldliness. When we're just sitting there having conversations and mm -hmm. somebody says something about Jesus, my mind goes, Oh, I know Jesus. I know him because mm -hmm. I was exposed to some level of the truth. Mm -hmm. So since so so when so I so I hear my friend say something crazy. Oh no, mm -hmm. I I know him and I know that that's not true. Mm -hmm. I know even though I'm in sin, mm -hmm. I know that I know what you're right. saying is Jack. I know that's not I know that's not true. I know mm -hmm. I know that's not that's not Jesus. And so I would my mind would shift. Mm -hmm. It would shift for a moment, but it will go it will go back. It will mm -hmm. go back to the way right. that it was afterwards. Right. It will go back to the way that it was after. So I do believe that lukewarmness can be it, you can send that to your child mm. you can send that, that 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 happens over and over again mm -hmm. through through households yeah. through lineage like right. that that's just in people to be that way mm -hmm. and so and so i'm telling you people really people really think that that's what a christian means a lot of people just don't understand mm -hmm. like they just don't understand that that's not that, that that's not gonna cut it mm -hmm. what do you mean that doesn't cut it i go to church every sunday but there's no transformation of heart so right. what are you saying that 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 is right. exactly right. Right. so so for me to tell you that's not gonna cut it you're gonna look at me crazy because mm -hmm. you go to church every sunday right. mm -hmm. and, and you and you're and you're you're the bible study teacher and you're, you're you do this and you do that right. you're gonna look at me crazy mm -hmm. you got you that that's that you're gonna you're gonna think i'm the one that's in error right no no you're not changing in heart, so it doesn't matter how much you go to church. Right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you wear. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how much scripture you know. Right. Yes, we're supposed to study and show ourselves approved, but it doesn't matter how much scripture you, you know if you're not changing on the inside. Mm -hmm. And why am I not changing on the inside? Because I've always known this to be this, mm -hmm. and I've always known that you can get into heaven being this way, right. and you can be you can get into heaven even doing less than what I do because mm -hmm. because my cousins they, they do this, mm -hmm. they do this, they do, and I, they still talk about God. In the next sentence. So what does that tell me? Oh no, that's a mindset, right. and we have to break that way of right. thinking. Right. Right. We have to break that. If you, if you, if, if you, if you, you know, have if you, the Lord blesses you. And one thing she was talking about was how you know the Lord will cut your bloodline short. A lot of people can't. A lot of people in the in the, in the world and outside of the will of God, they wonder, oh why, why is it that I can't have kids? The mm -hmm. Lord has the Lord has cut oh, that man. off for you. Mm -hmm. He's cut that. No, you you've done this in this line, and I can't have any more evil unless I'm gonna yeah. destroy you. Yes. No, no, I, yes. I, it's so it's, it's more than the natural. It's mm -hmm. more than the natural. There are everything that happens in the, in the um in the spirit that it, it happens in the spirit. Then it happens in the yeah. natural. Yeah. So it's not just as simple as I can't have kids. Right. No, the Lord, it, yeah, the yeah. Lord created you. He created you to right. multiply. Right. So if you can't multiply, that's an issue you have to take up with the Lord. That's not man-made. Right. The doctor can't tell you why you can't have kids. Yes. They can give you a small ex explanation right. but they can't tell you what's really going on you need right. to go to the lord yeah. you need to go to the lord it was sarah said the sarah that now that was an instance where 
the Lord, the Lord had to open her womb. I don't, I don't, right. it, it doesn't say in the Bible that that was necessarily her, the Lord sealing her and, and judging her in that way. No, right. it was that she had to seek the Lord, but mm -hmm. people are outside of the will of God. So why should he, why should he do that? No, your family line is this way. Mm -hmm. right. Your family line, unless you break it. No, I'm not continuing this. Yeah. Right. I'm not, and, and that's actually his, that's actually him in his grace. Yeah. Because if he was to allow that, no, no, hmm. no, no, no. no. Yeah, no, that's that's so true. And so this is what we're seeing because God is God is after man's heart. And so if God's after man's heart, then there's a need for uh, man to realize that. And so sometimes God knows that man is in pursuit of things. Guys, and man is in pursuit of relationships. Man is in pursuit of children. Man is in pursuit of certain things. And he sometimes can work through your pursuit and, and, and kind of reveal himself in that process. So you cry out to God for, uh, you know, a child or whatever it may be. Right. And then, and, and God, you know, wants to reveal himself and say, Hey, I'm the one you're really looking for, right. you know, and, and so th this is why sometimes, or matter of fact, a lot of the time, mm -hmm. the Lord has to strip things from people in order for them to be saved. Mm -hmm. Like in low. order for them to get low, get to the place to where they realize that they are nothing without God, that they have something that is come that's missing something that they truly are yearning for something because because you know you can get things in the world and then you realize that they don't fulfill you yeah. you're, you're just led to the next idolatrous thing mm -hmm. you know you're, okay so it, will this fulfill me uh it didn't well well this fulfill, um that didn't either well this oh that didn't either and so god is trying to reveal to man that he's that 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 uh, that source of fulfillment that source of power that the, he's the grace that we need so that we can really break these generational mm -hmm. curses and these bloodline bondage um, uh, perspectives. And so, so one of the things is, is, is that why do we say break them? Because there is a level of effort, a level of seriousness and effort that's necessary on your part by, via the Holy Ghost, by the power of God to literally violently come against that bloodline curse or, or that stronghold, that generational curse. You, there is a, a aggression in the spirit, the word of God, Jesus, I, I mentioned this in the pre previous video. That Jesus says that heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. There is a necessary coming against this specific connection mm -hmm. because this connection is not something that's like um, it's it's not some puzzle piece that like you you can easily just separate from uh, your, the generational curse is not just some uh, uh, Twizzler that you can magnet. You, and not just some small magnet or, or Twizzler some candy you can mm -hmm. just pull apart mm -hmm. this is a literal this is why we are talking about chains mm -hmm. we're talking about things that are hard to pull apart yeah. that seem in our carnal nature mm -hmm. impossible to break right. and so you need something super supernatural to break something that's been soulishly implanted in your bloodline for generations. You need the power of God to really break it because it's something that's strong, something that's that's in you and it wants in the deception in that bloodline bondage is that it wants you to think that, oh, no, 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 you love this. You, you love this. You know, no, 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 this this curse, it's not a curse. It's a blessing. This 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 perversion? Mm. Oh no! It's it's not something that you should fight against. Mm -hmm. It's something you should support. Mm -hmm. It's something that you should encourage. Mm -hmm. It's something that you should prepare for your generations behind you to also walk in. Right. There's an internal deception, and so your body it becomes an enemy, and so you have to get to the place to where you're spiritually alive to come against it with spiritual aggression. I mean, it's a beautiful thing when you see a 45-year-old man dance around in the church like a ballerina because he is free. Freedom is something that an individual senses internally. Some people who are watching this, the youth that are watching this, they, they don't know what freedom feels like. 
They, they don't know that they, they they're and so sometimes people say, oh, man, the Christian's talking over my head. I can't understand what he's talking about. And so this is why the Lord has to encounter you. There's a encounter. There is a spiritual touching that you have to cry out for so that the Lord can really lay hands on you and get you to experience the type of freedom that you see people you know, doing circles, spinning around like a ballerina for like th that freedom is so invigorating. It's so awesome when you feel the presence of God on you. And so the youth, the, 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 the youth that are in the world, they believe in the cessationism to where, you know, the miracles don't really happen. Mm -hmm. um, things aren't supernaturally intervened and prayer don't really work and mm -hmm. this don't happen. Let, let's feed the poor and let's do natural things that we can see the evidence of. Mm -hmm. But the reality is there's a supernatural power mm -hmm. that God wants you to experience. Mm -hmm. God wants to really train transform your mind and your heart so that you can perceive his presence and then attack the very thing that is trying to keep you bound to the enemy. See, see, when you realize, when you experience the power of God, when you experience the love of God, when you experience God's power to really uh, uh, satisfy you on the inside to where, to where you're like, man, the, the things of the world, they really don't matter anymore. Like, man, like, Oh, yeah, man, you haven't uh, been to th that uh, place in a long while. You haven't talked to that person in a long while. You haven't, you know, indulged in this bondage in a long while. Why? Because I feel full. I I'm full. I I I I'm different now. And so the Spirit of God wants us to feel full full in the spirit, feel different to the degree that we don't, we aren't satisfied by the things that kept us craving for the corrupt things. We, we, so the, the reality is God is trying to engraft us. So we, we, we've been talking about engraftment. My sisters and I, we were talking about engraftment because engraftment is something that is very, very, very important. I, I was talking to my sisters about how engraftment is something, it's, it's typically a, a farm, a farming word because we're talking about taking a, a piece of something and uh, merging it or implanting it with something else so that it so that whatever you're implanting, implanting it into can give what was injected into it nourishment for that thing to bear fruit. So from a Christian perspective, we as Christians, we were engrafted into the faith. We were engrafted into this new source of motivation, of inspiration, of power, of knowledge, of, of identity, of 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 ways of, of living, wisdom, all of these new things that we were engrafted to are, are we, so now we don't, we're not satisfied by the things of the world anymore because we've, we have a new taste. There's a new taste in our mouths. There's a new perspective in our minds. And so we, so the old things need to get to the place in your mind that they aren't things that you run to anymore. You have to run to the things of God. And so it does take a transformation. It does take that purification, but there is a hunger that you have to have so that you can really truly be the new person that God promised you that you can be. So the youth need to realize that this engrafting that is happening is something that God is designing and he's he's so this is why there's nothing new under the sun you know so we know that this farming uh uh perspective to where you can put one branch to um, the stalk of a tree per se. And then you have one, uh, the, the, the branch that was producing uh, some other type of fruit can now also produce simultaneously with the tree that produces another fruit. And so we, because we are engrafted, we are people that can be changed because don't listen don't listen to the enemy that tells you that you cannot be new mm -hmm. that you cannot be changed that you cannot be uh holy that you can't be 
a person that is not worldly. Everyone's worldly. You know, the world will tell you that or the false Christian will tell you that everyone's worldly. Everyone has a little bit of, you know, Mm -hmm. no, no, no. We need to come against the nature, the nature. You don't have to be worldly. Even if uh, there's something in you that someone else sees, we, there needs to be a understanding that that is temporary because the Lord is going to reveal it to the person and then get rid of it because God is th- th- that perfect surgeon that is able to take away things as he uh, empowers a person, as he causes a person to grow and to be like him. And so this is this is important. This is the type of true transformation from the, the remnants of the bloodline that people need to know about the the bloodline is not cool like it's they don't listen to the enemy oh oh, it's cool to do that it's cool to do this sin it's cool it's 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 popular everyone does this no not the believer that is serious about actually going to heaven that's serious about being like jesus and ultimately uh, walking in ways that will ultimately be invited into life eternal with god and so this is what we're talking about we we we, as my sister was saying which was so powerful in reference to the the renouncing of these things the the denouncing the renouncing the repenting uh the the affirming of the good things of god you know allowing the word to saturate you uh as it says in james you know the engrafted word that is able to save your souls Mm -hmm. And, and so that's what we're talking about we're talking about breaking ties with the things of the world and re-educating ourselves in the spirit to know what God is pleased with so that we can ultimately be the pleasing of God in Jesus name. So any last words, my sisters, my beloved, uh, grace filled, power filled, strength filled sisters in the Lord. Yes. So what I would say is get free, be free, and stay free you don't have to accept or receive the curses the bloodline that is on your family just because you're a part of a family or that you've been you've been born into a family the lord will give you new family (laughs) jesus said those who do the will of my my father are my brother and my mother so you don't have to feel like you're going to lose something. If you don't break free from the curses, you are going to lose something. You're going to lose your soul. Mm. So don't feel like you're obligate or entitled to have to hold on to these things. Don't, don't just say, well, that's just me. That's Mm -hmm. just what I do. I don't see anything wrong with it. Like if you, if you lust after women, and you desire that woman in your heart and you just say, well, that's just what I do. I'm a man. That's uh-huh. I, that, that's just what I do. Uh-huh. That's not right. And you can't be okay with that. Or if you're a woman and you say, well, I dress my body up because I, I like the attention of men. That's just what I do. I'm me. Mm-hmm. This is my body. You cannot think that way. You can't be okay with that. And you can't be okay with that for you or your lineage. You have mm-hmm. to... Mm-hmm. You have to want this to be broken, and it can be broken, and God mm-hmm. wants to set you free internally, outwardly, and all throughout your lineage. Mm-hmm. So Amen. that's what I believe. Amen. Any last words, my sister? So I would say, because um, we, we do want to talk to the youth as well, you know, it's not you're not it's not you're not too young or you know it's not too early for you to de- make a decision to break a generational curse it's not an right. age limit like you don't have to be right. old to say i'm going to break a generational curse no it literally starts with you you're a person you're a human it starts with your life your life you can change your life and your life can be a glory unto a, a, a door for the glory of god instead of instead of walking in the traditions of the people that came before you it can it can be it doesn't have to be what you've always seen it to be um, one of the things with the children of israel they they it was the issue was that they kept walking in the same in in the same cycles like it, mm-hmm. it was that was the that was the reason that was, that, that they, they kept walking in the same mm-hmm. cycles the lord said over and over again hey you're walking in the sins of your fathers it, it was it was like that with the people was like that with the kings oh no you 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 do this and you do it at a worse level mm-hmm. you do it at a worse level and so it's important for us to understand that 
these things, like my sister said, these things can be broken. You don't have mm. to walk in these same cycles. You don't have to. You don't have to do that. It's important for us to break these traditions because those tra those same traditions, the traditions of the Pharisees, that those same traditions mm -hmm. is what kept them in the bondage that they right. were in. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I want to continue. I, I'm very. I want to continue in these same cycles. Mm -hmm. I want to continue in these same cycles. I don't want to. I. Don't, they weren't open for anything new, so that's why they couldn't see that that was Jesus Christ in the flesh. Yes. They weren't open for anything new. Yes. No, this is this is what I always mm -hmm. know. This mm -hmm. is what I've always seen things to be as. So you're coming in saying that you don't have to wash your hands. You're coming in saying that we have to eat your eat your flesh, drink your... No. The, you're coming in mm -hmm. saying things that are opposite from what we've always known. Right. But you have to be open. The Word of God says, if there be first the willing... like you, All you have to do is be willing for, this, for the Lord to touch you. Hey, Go to what my, like my sister said, repent, repentance, acknowledging, hey, this is an issue. God, this is the issue in my in my family line. This is a generational curse. And I don't want to walk in the generational curse. Like I said, it's not self-will. It's mm -hmm. not self-will. Mm -hmm. It's not you saying, you just saying, oh, I'm going to be different. Mm -hmm. Like like turning over a new look. Like mm -hmm. that's that's it's not that. It's, it's not something that you can fleshly say that you're not gonna mm -hmm. do. It takes daily, daily putting yourself under the subjection of to the word of God. Mm -hmm. Now that that's it's crucifying your flesh mm -hmm. daily. It's not just something that you can say, it's something that you act upon. Amen. 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 That's true. In Jesus' name. And so um again, you know, we are desiring for the youth to come out from among the, mm -hmm. the, the bloodline persecutions, the emptiness, the, the lack of identity that the enemy is tricking, is manipulating the people to uh, walk in. And so uh, by the grace of God, uh, if you uh, know my sister, you know, go ahead and message her. You know my sister, message her. We are available right. for the people. We are available. If you have any questions, you have any concerns, if you, um, you know, if you just want to know more, if you want to um, follow her, you can definitely go to her page. Follow my sister here. There, there is, there, there is, there are people with God-given wisdom mm -hmm. that can help you in your state and help the repair process because we had people that have invested in us people you know don't look at us as if we have it all together in, in, in reference to <laughs> us arriving or something right. we it's it's by the grace and the power of god that has impacted our lives to the to a, such a great degree that has put us in the position to where we can stand here and speak or sit here and speak before you with confidence and love and and, and faith concerning what God can do, what he's able to do. And so uh, reach out. God is giving you the opportunity so that you can communicate with people that are able to strengthen you and help you to come to Jesus for real. Not, for, you know, concerning the, the false religion that's out there, but for real in Jesus name so you can ultimately inherit inherit heaven inherit heavenly places and all the things that God wants you to uh, have in reference to inheritance so God bless each and every one of you that we're viewing tonight um as I always say feet follows focus so focus on the Lord Jesus Christ and your feet my feet our feet will follow in Jesus name God bless you <laughs>